Hello, my littlest artists. Do you know what hit me today? It's been a little while since you and I connected directly with a video that's made just for you. So that's what this is today. We are going to explore the world of Claude Monet, who's a very famous French Impressionist painter. And we're gonna create a beautiful Impressionist painting like this one of water lilies inspired by Monet's work. So let's take a look at this video, learn a little bit about Monet, and then meet me down here for the fun creation. We're going to need our oil pastels and our watercolors for this one. This artist's full name was Claude Monet. He was born and lived in Paris. His art gave the impression of a picture. This was a new style, and he helped create Impressionism. In the 1860s, Monet began to paint Impressionist landscapes. A landscape is a picture of trees, a person, or a building that is outside. By the 1910s, Monet began to paint water lilies. This is what he became most famous for. Monet wanted to capture the impression of nature. As you can see, these paintings are filled with water lilies and even bridges. So isn't Monet's work beautiful? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw inspiration from that and create a picture of water lilies and a beautiful bridge just like Monet's garden um, using our oil pastels watercolors and we're actually going to use a secret ingredient which is table salt so regular old table salt and um, we're going to use that at the end i'll show you to create really cool texture in our watercolor so let's gather those supplies and we'll get started so the first step is we want to draw the bridge that shows in monet's garden so for that we're going to use our oil pastels so i'm going to use two colors i'm going to use our brown and our black I like the look of the two colors it gives sort of a shadow to the bridge so let me show you how we do it so from one part of your page somewhere in the center maybe slightly higher than the center you're going to draw an arc so an upside down U across your page so let's do that now and this is forming the top of my bridge and I'm going all the way from one edge of the paper to the other and then I'm going to repeat that underneath to create the bottom portion of my bridge. Now I want these to be quite um, thick lines because we're going to be watercoloring over them. So what I'm going to do is go back and make my oil pastel a little bit thicker. On both lines. Great. Now what I need to do is create the slots in my, in my bridge. Is that what they're called? Slots in a bridge? You know what I'm saying. Like the little posts in the bridge. So I'm going to do some vertical lines down like this. Notice I'm really pushing quite heavily on my oil pastel. I don't want any of those little white spots. I'm trying to make it as solid a color as possible. There we go. And now with my black, what I like to do is just do a little shadow underneath. So I'm just gonna create a little area of darkness right up against the brown, just on the bottom. Gives the um, bridge a little bit more depth. Okay, nearly there. And you can actually do it under here as well. And now we have our bridge. All right. Now remember with Impressionist painting, we don't want to draw. I know this bridge really does look like an actual bridge, but now for the water lilies that we're going to make, I am not going to draw an actual water lily. Watch this. I'm going to get my two shades of green oil pastel and we're gonna alternate these colors. So using both of these colors, we're gonna create patches of green that give the impression that a water lily is there. So we're painting with color. We're not painting an actual water lily. So watch what I mean. Simply dots of color. 
Now, one thing to watch out for is we want this painting to have perspective. So the closer something is to us in a painting, the bigger it is. So further down on my page, I'm going to draw my water lilies slightly bigger than they are further up on the page. That's going to give the impression that we're looking at the painting um, and it's going further into the distance. It's going to give it some depth. So I'm going to do larger green areas for my water lilies down here and they will get progressively smaller as I go up my page. So we can make them quite large down at the bottom. And I'm going to be using both shades of green for this. And placement is really up to you. Wherever you think a water lily should go is where it should go. You can do as many or just a few if you wish. We'll do a big one here, maybe another one here. Make this one a little bigger. So now it's kind of looking like a little pond of water lilies um, getting smaller as they go up here. So water lilies have beautiful flowers that, that sometimes come in red or yellow. So you can choose, you can do either, you can do both. I think I'm gonna choose red. So what I want to do is just put a little tip of color on each lily um, to give the illusion that there is a, a little water lily flower there. So I'm just gonna add some red areas like this. See how easy it is to be an impressionist painter? <laughs> because we don't have to be precise. We are just putting color on the page and it's all gonna pull together when you see it at the end. So now it looks like water lilies with little flowers on top. Now it is the fun part, my friends. Okay, so for this, we're gonna need the salt um, so I'm just going to pour a little more salt in here. It's easier for me to sort of sprinkle it with my hands when I pour it into a bowl. So we have our salt here. Um, and then the watercolors. Now for this, we are really going to need to wake up our watercolors really well. And the colors we're going to use for the pond area are the blues and then purple also looks great. So let's wake up our blue paints, the light blue and the dark blue and also our purple. I know my colors are mixing a little bit. I'm not too worried about it because I actually want them to mix on the page. But notice how wet I'm really adding a lot of water. So I've got puddles of water in each of these. Now what we're going to do is a wet on wet watercolor technique and we're going to do a sprinkling of salt to add texture to our watercolor. So this is where it gets fun. So what I want you to do is just create lots of puddles of blue, but keep it very wet. Sorry, I should have wet my paper first. That was silly. So I'm gonna wet my paper first. And notice I'm painting right over the oil pastels and that's okay. But I'm using all the colors, the purple, the blues. And you can do this section by section because when it's nice and wet like this with a puddle and lots of color, let me show you what happens when we sprinkle the salt. Can you see? Notice how it's creating this really cool texture, it sort of crystallizes, the salt crystallizes um, in the paint and creates these beautiful areas of color and texture. So we're gonna continue this across our entire page. But as I was painting, I just noticed something, my friends, um, I didn't put any water lilies in between my bridge to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to put a couple right in here. Because then the bridge looks more see-through. So just add a little, a little touch of color between the bridge too. All right, let's get back to our sold painting.
and there we go. So if you noticed, I did not paint over where I'd sprinkled my salt. So I'm doing it section by section. I'm putting down some water, putting down some different colors of paint, and then sprinkling salt and moving on to a next section. If I were to paint over this right now, I'm gonna ruin the, the, the beautiful texture that we're creating. So once you're done with this, the final step is if you happen to have some green paint at home, I love this. It's a really fun way to sort of finish off and frame your piece nicely. So get some green paint and pour some on a little bowl. And if you do not have green paint at home, don't worry, you can skip this step. Your painting is beautiful as it is. You could go back in when it's dry and might maybe add a little bit more color. I'm noticing that my red isn't showing up as much. So what I'd probably do is when it's dry is go back and just do another little coloring of oil pastel red over it, just to make the red a little bit more vibrant. But let me show you um, what we do for foliage. So we want to do sort of like bushes and trees sort of overhanging Monet's garden. So for that, I just cut a little piece of sponge and with my green paint, I'm simply gonna dip it in like so. I actually have two shades of green to make it look a little bit more interesting. I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint on my sponge. I'm not gonna swipe it. I'm gonna do sort of a sponging technique like this. So I'm just going to dab it on my paper around the edges. And notice this now looks like trees overhanging our Monet Garden Bridge. You can do some down the sides too. And there you have it. A beautiful Monet piece. Um, done in the style of impressionist painting. So I hope you had a lot of fun with that. I can't wait to see your results, but I just love this project. It's such an easy one with great results. So enjoy, and I will talk to you next week.